Electrodes are wonderful electronic devices and circuits which are helping us to give uninterrupted power supplies. So, today's class I am starting with the fifth chapter that is inverters and the topics which are going to be covered is what is an inverter, what is its classification based on the source that is voltage source inverter, current source inverter and then I will be doing a comparison between the two. So, an inverter the simplest definition which can be given is a DC to AC converter is known as inverter or if I could tell in a more better terminology a power inverter or inverter is an electronic device or circuitry that changes direct current that is DC to alternating current that is AC. Its function is to change a DC input voltage to a symmetrical AC output voltage. Please see the terminology symmetrical because once AC comes into picture I will be having a positive half cycle and a negative half cycle and there should be a symmetry between those two half cycles and the AC output voltage of desired magnitude that is the value of the output voltage also matters and frequency that is the time during which I will be getting one positive half and one negative half that gives me the frequency the time cross between one positive half and one negative half. So, an inverter which converts DC to AC. The input voltage, the output voltage and frequency along with the overall power handling is depending on the design of the specific device or circuitry. So, I can have inverters which are having very low value of voltage and low power handling capacities or I can have very high power handling capacity of megawatts capacity inverters also. So, it depends on the design of the specific device or circuitry for what for which load you are going to use it is going to depend on. One more thing is a power inverter can be entirely electronic that is only electronic uh, devices components may be there or it may be a combination of the mechanical effects such as rotary apparatus and electronic circuitry. In fact, the uh, in, uh, advent of these inventors the, in the history is seen that it was more of electromechanical in the beginning and then finally, it moved on to become more electronic circuitry. Now, the problem is the output AC voltage because I am getting an AC output it can be a fixed value that is magnitude of it may be one constant or it can be variable. And one more feature which I can add is at a fixed frequency or variable frequency because it is an AC I have to talk about the terminology frequency also. So, I can have different combinations I can have a fixed AC output with fixed frequency or a fixed AC output with variable frequency. So, like that I can get different combinations depending on what type of load I am going to connect it. A variable output voltage how I can obtain? I can obtain it by two ways that is I can vary the input DC voltage and keep the gain of the inverter constant. Now, what do I mean by gain? Please see gain inverter gain is the ratio of AC output voltage to DC input voltage. So, one thing which I can do is I can change the DC input voltage keeping the gain constant or I can change the gain of the inverter keeping the DC input voltage constant. Either way I can change the output voltage value I can get a variable AC output voltage. In the next slide I have only talked about types of inverters. There are various way methods in which I can classify inverters, but I have restricted myself only to these two classifications 
as per your syllabus. So, types of inverters based on the output waveform, I can have square wave inverters, I can have quasi square wave modified sine wave also I can tell it as or sine wave inverters PWM pulse with modulated inverters also I can call. Based on source, I can have inverters which are voltage fed or voltage source inverters they call they are termed as. I can have current fed or current source inverters and I can even have a variable DC linked inverter wherein I am changing the value of the DC input voltage. So, this is the classification please see classification can be in various manner, but as per your syllabus based on source you are having voltage fed inverter, you are having current fed inverter and you are having variable DC linked inverter. Now, a square wave inverter is the simplest least expensive type, but problem with it is it is having a low quality of power. So, I actually rarely use this type and used for only for simplest circuits. Most popular of the inverters is the modified sine wave which I told you modified square wave or quasi square wave that is what I call. It is suitable for many electronic loads and it is the most popular low cost inverters on the consumer market today. The third type which is going to matter in terms of the type of waveform that is pure sine wave inverters which is suitable for sensitive devices wherein the waveform output waveform is very important the shape of the output waveform is also important then I make use of this pure sine wave inverters which produce an AC voltage with low total harmonic distortion, harmonics, unwanted signals, unwanted DC components present in the AC signal. See when it is AC it should be pure AC or a pure sinusoidal, I do not want to have any DC component. So, if there is a presence of DC component, I call it as harmonic, I call it as noise <coughs> and I call it as a distortion. So, a pro pure sine wave inverter will give me very low harmonic distortion which is below 3 percent and that is why it is suitable for sensitive devices like medical equipment, laser printers and stereos. Now, I am talking about a DC input. So, I have to tell, I have to uh, bother about commutation that is how I turn off because most of my uh, electronic components which I use in the inverters are my thyristors. So, thyristors means when I switch on, when I switch off, more than on, off, how do I off it, what time or what instant I off it, that becomes a matter of concern. So, that is why I have to know about what are the different ways in which I can turn off. So, types of commutation in the inverters you could make out that there are four major types. One is the device commutation itself, wherein the device itself turns off by itself. So, it is a type of self commutation. So, in that case I make use of fully controlled devices like your gate turn off uh, thyristors or IGBTs insulated gate, insulated gate uh, bipolar transistors or MOSFETs I use, wherein they are fully controlled devices which can turn off by themselves self commutation. Okay. Then I am also having another type of self commutation known as forced commutation wherein I can force the on uh, the thyristor which is on into off condition. So, it is also a type of internal. The other two that is line commutation and load commutation are external commutations. So, externally I will be sending a signal to turn off, under line commutation I am having phase controlled, I am having uh, phase controlled rectifier, phase controlled AC controller, thyristor cycloconverter and I am having load commutation also. Depending on the type of load, I can turn off the thyristor by decreasing the current below 
holding current value which we have already discussed in the previous few classes. So, commutation turning off of the thyristors which are used in inverter circuits are important and these are the different types. So, as a result it gives rise to different types of inverters also. Now, if I have to come to know the basic concept of how an inverter works. So, most commercial DC to AC inverter circuits use the same basic concept. What it is? I will be having a low DC voltage from the input because DC should be converted to AC and that because it is having a low value, I will have to first step it up that is increase its value to a higher voltage with the help of a DC link. And why I should do it is because it should correspond to the peak value of the desired AC voltage. Now, my AC voltage values may be very high, it may be in kilo volts, but my I cannot give a DC input voltage in kilo volts, I cannot expect giving. My DC input value that is magnitude will be very less. So, I have to get a very high value of AC means this low voltage DC must be stepped up by some means and then it should be stepped up to a value of the desired AC voltage which I want. So, that I can do it in two different stages. First I will step it up and then I will give another second power stage in terms of amplifier maybe or transformers maybe. Okay. I can make use of or uh, transformers also I can make use of this full bridge half bridge configurations also wherein it amplifies the input DC. Okay. The output voltage can be controlled either in square wave what, what are the most widely used is uh, PWM that is pulse width modulated see over here I have written pulse width modulated pure sine wave circuits. So, you can you can get the uh, required type of waveform and the output voltage and frequency can be controlled by varying the duty cycle. The duty cycle means how much period of time the uh, SCR must be on and how much it should be off that is T on T off that is going to give me what is known as a duty cycle. Okay. And then maybe to remove most of my uh, unwanted harmonic I told you unwanted DC components in the AC to get a clean sinusoidal output I may have to pass it through a filters. So, low pass filters which are normally used output LC low pass filters. Okay. So, the same concept I am going to show in the way of these block diagrams which I have shown here. See normally I get my DC input with the help of a battery then I have a MOSFET driver circuit which is going to I told you one step or the DC input voltage will be increased. The second step stage wherein I get give a step up transformer because I need AC of the required magnitude may be very high magnitude. So, I will do another step up and then finally, I get the required AC power. So, this is the simplest manner block diagram of a inverter which I have shown. Another more better way of putting it over here please see the inverters output is an AC voltage that is precisely controlled in both amplitude and frequency. So, I have used please see DC I can even make use of the second layer also, but I have not bothered here I am getting DC because I am talking of an in inverter. So, DC to AC converter the first block diagram shows that it is a DC to AC converter which may be a chopper circuit you have already learnt this in your previous uh, session. Then I may go on to the next stage which is the driver circuit to increase the value I may be using transformers or I may be using amplifiers I already told you. And then finally, output circuit I can give protection or I can give filters to remove the unwanted uh, harmonic signals unwanted signals. So, finally, I get a regulated AC at a precise variable frequency or some magnitude. Now, I can include this feedback path also for a better working for uh, maybe removing unwanted uh, noise 
I can give a feedback through MCOs that is master control units and at every stage feedback I will be analyzing the performance of the inverter and getting my best output regulated AC. Okay, so, this is another type of uh, what you say block diagram for the inverter which I have shown. Now, the most widely used type of inverters nowadays is the solar. So, I just wanted to give you an information about this, how actually this solar inverter block diagram look, looks like, a very simple block diagram I have shown. So, you are definitely having a solar panel, then you are having what is known as a DC link and then it is given to the inverter that is DC to AC okay? and then you are having a control board and control room okay? and through fiber optic cables I have shown. Then you are having a line filter and transformer depending on what type of AC output you want and final protection can be given by a circuit breaker and finally, at the output you are getting utility grade AC power. What do you mean by utility grade? What how much of magnitude of uh, AC and what is the frequency of AC you will decide and you will get that AC power. So, this is one more block diagram which I wanted to show you. Okay. So, now moving on to what is a voltage source inverter based on the input source you are having three types of which the first type is the voltage source inverter. Inverter is called a voltage source or voltage fed, both the terminologies can be used. I can call VSI or VFI if the input voltage remains constant and of course, it is fed with an input voltage and if that input voltage remains constant, then that inverter is called as a voltage source or voltage fed inverter. And they are the most widely used type of uh, inverters voltage source inverter because they use an advanced PWM pulse width modulation scheme and their efficiency is very high and harmonics are low that you will be coming to know of it more in detail in the next few slides. Okay. Now, what does the voltage source inverter actually consists of? It consists of a DC side which is a constant voltage I already told you and what is and it is also containing a low impedance voltage source or a bulk capacitor or a combination of both. Okay? You, will, you will have a DC source voltage source and you will be having a capacitor. Now, why did I choose a capacitor? Because capacitance means it is a property which does not allow instantaneous change in the voltage. So, that is why I am choosing a capacitor. Then AC side voltage. Okay, because DC to AC. So, AC side voltage that is the output side is either square wave or quasi square wave. AC side current is determined by the load. So, depending on the load, what type of load, whether I am having a resistive load or inductive load or I am having RLC load itself, any type of load I can connect. So, depending on that, I will be having my AC side current. So, I think you all know already that if I have a capacitor, I am having leading uh, power factor, if I have an inductor, I am having lagging power factor. So, current will lead or current will lag the voltage. If I have a resistor, I am having in phase. So, that is why AC side current is determined by the load depending on the type of load. And one more extra feature or what is to be connected in these inverters are these anti parallel diodes. What do I mean by anti parallel? I have spoken in the previous few sessions itself. When the anode of a thyristor is connected to the cathode of the diode, that is anti parallel. Okay? Anode connected to anode means parallel, but in this case I am telling anti parallel. So, anode of the thyristor connected to cathode of the diode and cathode of the thyristor connected to the anode of the diode that gives me a anti parallel circuit connection. So, anti parallel diodes are necessary to provide an energy feedback path especially when you switch off the thyristor where does that energy go. So, you should have either free freewheeling diodes that energy 
path will be provided by these diodes or they are even called as feedback diodes. So, you have to provide anti parallel diodes. So, the same what all I have told here I am just showing one circuit simplest circuit connection which is a half bridge uh, a voltage source inverter which you will be knowing more in detail in the next session of your uh, power electronics class. So, I am just showing one diagram. See, I told you already the input is a voltage source and a capacitor, bulk capacitor. So, I am have using both, okay. I am using an input DC voltage, I am using two capacitors also. Please see that voltage will be divided by 2 between these two capacitors and they will store it. They are energy storing devices in the form of charges they will be storing that voltage. Okay. Then I am having connecting a load, it can be any type of load R, RC, RLC whatever type of load. These are termed as switches please see they are actually thyristors, I have not shown what type, it can be SCR, it can be IGBT normally, IGBTs are preferred. So, switches, so two switches or two thyristors are used and these are the two anti parallel diodes or freewheeling diodes they are called as. So, this is the simplest circuit of a voltage source inverter. Okay. And types of voltage source inverters, you have a single phase half bridge inverter which I just showed you which is using two choppers that is two thyristors. Then you are having single phase full bridge inverter, full bridge and half bridge. Okay, uh, wherein the waveform also changes, the efficiency of the circuit also changes. So, it uses four choppers and if I need a three phase AC waveform, definitely I have a three phase inverter. So, number of choppers is thyristors, you depends on star or delta connection over here. So, if I make use of a delta, I use six, if I make use of star, I use double the number. Okay. So, these are the types of voltage source inverters single phase half bridge, single phase full bridge and three phase inverters. Okay. So, in the next session of your power electronics, you will be learning more in detail about these inverters, their performance and their waveforms. Next, let us move on to current source inverter. So, current source inverter it is an inverter in which the input current is maintained constant. Now, I am not talking about voltage, now I am talking more of current okay. and it is also a current fed inverter. So, more than a voltage source, I am going to say that the DC side is a constant current source which is having high impedance. So, I can call have that high impedance source either as a current source or an inductor, please see over here instead of a capacitor I am going to make use of inductor because inductor is a device which is going to prevent instantaneous change in current. So, I need constant current. Okay. AC side current is quasi square wave because I am talking of a current source inverter, I am bothered about the current in the output side, it is quasi square wave, but the AC side voltage is determined by the load. Okay. So, current is I know the waveform which is going to be done generated depending on the type of circuitry I am using. So, AC side current will be quasi square wave, but the voltage waveform will be determined by the load. Again, I have already told you whether it leads, whether it lags or whether it is in phase with this AC side current depends on the type of load, depends on whether I use an inductor. then voltage will lead the current. If I use a capacitor, then voltage will lag the current. If I use only a resistive load, they will be in phase. Okay. So, whatever it is, I am AC side voltage is determined by the load. Then, no anti parallel diodes are needed in this case, but sometimes I make use of series diodes, diodes which are connected in series with the thyristor. Okay. To why do I need it to block any reverse voltage from for other power electronic uh, semiconductor devices. So, to block reverse voltages, so that it does not start conducting in the reverse direction, 
I am going to have series diodes. So, the same thing what I have told over here, I am showing it in the form of a uh, okay. inductor, what is its use? The CSI design that is current source inverter design incorporates large inductors for these reasons. You can have current lip ripple minimization because I need a current constant current. Okay, so, ripple that is unwanted AC components also may be there. So, term ripple comes into effect here because I am talking about DC input. Okay. So, current ripple minimization I can decrease the amount of DC uh, AC component in the DC in the form of ripple. So, ripple minimization is there then of course, in inductor it stores energy you know that and then even for fault current limiting if some unwanted fault current occurs also instantaneous change should not happen in the DC current. So, that is why I use inductors. Okay. So, the circuit diagram with MOSFETs I have shown over here, please see it is different. I am using a current source as my input side and I am using an inductor. Okay. So, the moment you see an inductor in the input side in an inverter, you should know that it is a current source inverter. This can be either a voltage or a current, but normally a current source is preferred. So, input side is a current source with an inductor so that the input current remains constant. Okay. The load over here please see, I am having an RLC diode, RLC load, so all three are there okay. and then I am having four thyristors and please see over here I am having series diodes. I have not connected diodes in uh, anti parallel, but I require series diodes so to uh, eliminate any reverse uh, uh, blocking uh, conduction stage. Okay. So, this is the simplest uh, uh, type of a current source inverter. What you should remember here in current sources, you have an inductor at the input, whereas in voltage source you had a capacitor connected across and you had a voltage. So, voltage in voltage source you keep voltage constant, input side voltage constant, in current source you keep input side current constant. Okay. Types of current source inverters, you will be having a single phase bridge current source inverter the simplest type or you will be having three phase and please see commutation is more important in these inverters. So, accordingly I can have three phase force commutated CSI. I can have three phase load commutated CSIs or I can have three phase self commutated CSIs. So, I already told you types of commutation self and force they are internal and load is external type of commutation. So, accordingly I have these type of current source inverters. Now, moving on to the comparison, I have to compare between voltage source inverters and current source inverters which I just discussed about. Voltage source inverters wherein input DC voltage remains constant and current source inverters wherein the input DC current remains constant okay. and they are fed with a DC voltage of constant value, they are fed with a DC current of constant value. Industrial markets, in industrial markets the VSI design is more popular and more uh, what do you say more uh, um, efficient. So, it has proven to be please see I am comparing, so that is why I am comparing between VSI and CSI. So, in industrial markets the VSI design has proven to be more efficient meaning to say I can get the required magnitude, the required waveform of the AC voltage with lesser harmonics and then it has higher reliability. Then it has faster dynamic response. What do I mean by dynamic response? I mean that rapid changes in the speed of the motor, torque of the motor also can occur using 
VSI which allows a wide range of applications or I can change the speed of the motor, I can change the speed of the, please see what I am telling is the motor when a motor is connected at the output, an AC motor is connected at the output, I can rapidly change its speeds also, I can change its torque also. So, as a result of which it is having a faster dynamic response that is what I mean to say. Then it is capable of running motors without derating, derating means changing its rating. So, I can uh, have design a VSI as per the rating of the motor which I am going to connect. Then VSI fully integrated design, what do I mean by fully integrated wherein I can make use of very large scale integration VLSI, then it, it saves money. Okay, when I use a VLSI design, okay, I can save money by minimizing install time, eliminating interconnect power cabling costs, power cabling also is going to matter and the floor space which it occupies because I am using a fully integrated design, definitely it reduces the building floor space. Then again VSI it has high power factor. Now, this terminology power factor comes into picture because I am talking about an AC output. So, you already know what power factor is and you know best value of power factor. Best value of power factor is 1. Power factor means cosine of the angle between the voltage and current or it is a ratio of resistance to impedance. So, until and unless I have a very good power factor, I can have efficiency and I can reduce the losses. Okay? So, in VSI high power factor through all load and speed ranges is possible. Then there is one very important terminology mean time to failure MTTF. How many times I can switch on and switch off? For how long a period I can switch on and switch off? the components the especially the thyristors. So, minimum component count I need not make use of uh, thousands of thyristors, I can decrease the uh, number by the VSI design and I can increase the mean time to failure meaning to say it can be more durable, it can work for more number of times, it can switch off and on for more number of times that is why the mean time to failure it has a very large mean time to failure. Then VSI does not require new replacement motors, I told you it need not be derated also. So, I can make use of the motors as is and I can design my VSI circuit for that particular motor, for that particular load and much more the VSI has high quality and robust industrial design. So, inverters normally are going to be widely used as UPS that is uninterrupted power supplies wherein I will I should have robust designs and they are having huge numerous number of applications which I will be talking in the next few slides. Okay. So, now if I have to have a comparison table, so normally compare when they ask or differentiate when they ask, it is better you put it in a tabular, tabular column like this. So, I have shown comparison between CSI and VSI in this manner. Now, when it comes to size, you are having fully integrated, I just told what fully integrated means, wherein I make use of VLSI or LSI large scale integration or very large scale integration. CSI it is limited because I make use of inductors, problem is I cannot fabricate them. So, that is why I cannot have a fully integrated CSI inverter. So, that is why I have written here it is limited. Whereas, VSI it is having a fully integrated design methodology. So, it is standard and it is having the smallest footprint. In the advantages itself I have told you that it occupies the very less space because of this fully integrated design. Then when I come to efficiency, efficiency means ratio of output 
to input. So, output AC to input DC. So, when it is full power, when I talk about full power efficiency, please see CSI is having somewhere on 95.7 percent, whereas VSI has a higher efficiency 97.7 percent. Okay? It may seem only 2 percent higher, but you please see over here lower power, please see the difference, there is a huge difference. In CSI, it is only 89.9, less than 90 percent efficiency, whereas VSI has maintained okay, more than 97 percent efficiency even when the power handling capacity also is low, less or more. So, that is why VSI is more preferred, it is having efficiencies greater than 97 percent. Then when I have to talk about reliability, how reliable or how many components I am going to make use of it, reliability is less okay, in CSI and the number of components it is having a high component count, number of components which I am going to use is more. In case of VSI, reliability is high and it is also having a low component count. Okay. Now, already I talked about this mean time to failure MTTF, see the huge difference between these two CSI 1 and a half years 1.5 years and VSI nearly 11.2 years, there is a huge difference in its mean time to failure. Okay. Dynamic response I already told you, immediate changes in torque speed dynamic, so sensitive to even small changes. Okay. CSI it is limited because it is having a choke, okay. it is having an inductor, so you require a filter. It is very fast because I do not use any reactors. So, I have talked about the different what do you say different parameters which I am comparing CSI and VSI. Some more parameters are there. Now, please see now, if I talk about a motor which I am going to connect in the output, filter whether I require a filter at the output side in CSI definitely it requires filter, because without a filter it is going to cause cogging, disturbances, noise, vibrations will be there. Okay? So, that is why it requires a filter, whereas in VSI I do not require even a filter also, the design is so efficient standard motor compatible. So, any type of motor compatibility can be made by the design of VSI. Multi motor, can I connect different types of motors? No, only a single motor in CSI. So, I can connect different multi motors, yes and I can connect motors of with rated value and below the rated value also. Then when I talk about input power, harmonics in it, harmonics means uh, ripple now, okay, ripple content. Here input the harmonics it is high, it requires filter, whereas here harmonics it is low, it mean it meets the standards, IEEE standards, it is one standard 519, it meets it, harmonic content is less. Power factor, I have already told you about it, it is very high in VSI for any type of load and any speed, the power factor is high, whereas in CSI it is low and it requires a sort of modulation that is pulse width modulation. So, students looking at these two comparison tables, you could very clearly make out that is VSI, that is voltage source inverters are more preferred compared to current source inverters and that is why even in your syllabus also you have to study more of VSI. Okay. The next few slides I would like to show you the numerous or innumerable number of applications of inverters without which learning this or coming to know of inverters itself uh, becomes uh, uh, useless. So, that is why I thought I would like to give some very interesting or very most widely used applications of inverters. 
most widely used which you all know is conversion of electrical power from DC type energy to AC type load sources, wherein I make use of batteries. Okay, you are see you are seeing it, you can you know you are using it in automobiles, then you are having solar, solar inverters I already talked about. So, you will be having huge solar panels for many uh, different type of loads you can control DC converted to AC and then driving those loads or even in your houses I have shown you the connection over here you are connecting a solar panel on top and then you are connecting inverters okay, and you are getting the AC you are con controlling the AC loads. So, you are having to charge the battery when the sunlight is there and you may connect you may have even DC loads please see nowadays you are having even DC loads because of their efficiency. You are having DC um, lights, you are having DC motors also and you are have even having AC loads which are going to be controlled by the inverter. Okay? Then you are having definitely fuel cells, please see fuel cells are the most widely used. I have shown you a helicopter over here wherein I make use of fuel cell which are going to give me the necessary DC to AC conversion. I have shown fuel cell. Please see over fuel cell direct methanol fuel cell DMFC system, power supply for off grid application I can make use of it. Then I can make use of a hybrid solution in com combination with solar cells. Then I can make use of it as emergency power supply for life and safety, critical on grid application. Please see the variety of uh, applications where I can use it, security purpose, traffic and mobility, oil and gas, communication, special applications, radars in your space and for leisure that is your ships. Okay? So, you can make use of it in innumerable number of applications. Then as a composite uh, part of a composite converter that is AC, DC, AC, please see DC to AC has come. So, it is can be used as AC, DC, AC frequency converter especially for AC motor drives, okay? wherein I can get a variable frequency up to 200 hertz and normally for transportation application I make use of it. Then I have shown you another uh, block diagram what actually happens for AC motor drive, how do I get this variable frequency drive. See I am having a grid AC, I do AC to DC conversion typically re rectifier using IGBTs, then I have a DC link which is linking this to this. Then I do the AC, DC to AC inversion using IGBTs, then controllable AC I get and I give it to the motor. So, this way I can get a variable frequency drive okay, for the motor. Then definitely your uninterrupted power supply. In the beginning I was just telling you when I am watching something very important on my on the TV, suddenly power goes off then. I can make use of the inverter to give the power immediately. So, normally speaking when there is power from your uh, uh, what do you say BESCOM, then you will be connecting the load over here and no running on normal AC power. At the same time through a charger the battery gets charged, but once the power goes off due to over or under voltage or due to some power loss immediately the battery comes into effect, battery will supply DC to the inverter, inverter converts that DC into a suitable AC and I am going to drive the load that is what is an UPS that is the working of a UPS and in the simplest manner I have shown it. And you have seen all of these, you use it in a many number of ways in your houses, for your TVs, okay, for your uh, computer systems. Then for induction heating, again AC, DC, AC converters for induction heating, I am not talking only about induction heating in your house, I am talking even of all your uh, induction heating processes, maybe annealing process, hardening, smelting, 
all over there I make use of inverters. Then I can make use of it in switching power supplies, the most important uh, type of su power supplies nowadays which has totally replaced my linear power supplies in their in terms of their efficiency in their power ok. Switching power supplies I make use of inverters. Specialized applications of inverters, x-ray equipment ok, laser jet printers, space applications also you make use of ok. So, numerous applications and here variable frequency, variable speed I have shown one more application over here. I can drive a motor which works as a saw ok, which works as a planer, which works as a shaper by an inverter and I can have different combination selections, speed of it can be changed ok. So, that is what is the applications of the inverter. Finally, the probable review questions what all I have covered in today's class ok. What is an inverter? Classify inverters based on source as per your syllabus, inverter classification based on source is there. The third type which I had told is variable DC link inverter wherein the input uh, DC voltage is varied. So, that is the third type which is not uh, uh, in detail for you in your syllabus. So, classify inverters based on source, differentiate between CSI and VSI inverters, then list the applications of inverters, uh, I already spoke about the applications, then they may ask what is a voltage source inverter, what is a current source inverter, depending on the number of marks you can answer accordingly. So, just like how I did in the previous sessions, I just wanted to show two important slides to maybe make you more interested, make you more curious about topic of inverter. You just go into the net and you type inverter, you will have number of uh, uh, what do you say sites which gives you lot of information. So, I just thought that I wanted to tell you inverters are used in applications ranging from microwaves, laptops to satellite communications please see. So, their applications are innumerable. Space application involves high power hundreds of kilowatts to megawatt systems. So, there also I make use of. Then there are very latest types of uh, inverters, micro inverters are also there very small inverters, you are having what is known as a vector wave eco inverter, these are all latest uh, the inverters type of inverters. This inverter produces the most efficient waveform in response to variations in the compressor motor frequency and the operating efficiency is improved throughout the entire speed range leading to a reduction in annual electricity cost. See, please see these are the things which are happening in the inverter design nowadays. Then you are having a CCFL inverter, what is CCFL? Cold cathode fluorescent lamp, I think you would have heard of CFLs already ok, more efficient. So, CCFLs inverters are there, they are used in ultra thin lamp cases like rare lamp for advertising signs. Then you are having magnetic flux vector sine wave drives, wherein a microprocessor converts motors electrical current waveform into sine waveform. So, you it uh, winding ratio can be increased and energy loss can be reduced. So, dear students I hope and pray you have understood what an inverter, what are the types of inverters are. So, in this class I have covered what an inverter is, what is its classification based on source, voltage source inverter what it is, current source what it is. I have compared both of them and finally, I have talked about the applications of the inverters. So, with this today's session, I hope you have understood and I hope you will go and read and then analyze what has been taught. So, dear students, thank you for your patient hearing, happy reading and keep smiling. Thank you.